some of you may recognize me as not being Phil Nui. Uh, my name is Trevor Claiborne. Uh, I am filling in for Phil, and I promise this is the last time I will make that joke. Um, and we're here to talk a little bit about analytics benchmarking. Uh, some of you may know that around three years ago, analytics offered benchmarking. Uh, we allowed any analytics user to opt in their data anonymously in aggregate to be used as part of a aggregate benchmark tool so that any analytics user who was opted in could go into analytics and see how they compare against sites that were like theirs. Last week, we made a, a small announcement saying that, hey, we're going to make some slight changes to this report. We're going to take it out of the interface, and we're going to move it into more of an email format. Not, not groundbreaking, but I'm here to share with you uh, a couple tidbits uh, of what this report's going to contain, and uh, hopefully get you excited for the report, which will be coming in a couple weeks. So to start off, I get the question very often, I'm sure you all do as analysts, what is a good bounce rate? Here for you on this graph is the bounce rate distribution of the world, um, effectively done by country. It's a histogram, so let me uh, plot it out. On the left axis, you've got number of countries. On the lower axis, you have bounce rate percentage. So all the way on the far left, you have a bounce rate of about 0.3, which most people consider great. On the far right, you have a 0.6, which most people consider OK, not bad. Let's put some countries on this to make this interesting. So from what you can see here on the far left, you've got Aruba and St. Lucia. Clearly, island life leads to less camp coming, puking, and leaving. You bounce less if you have a lovely uh, island lifestyle. Uh, all the way towards the center, we've got Germany, Pakistan, Japan. Uh, on the far right, we have China. It's hard to say what is happening in this case. We're not saying China is bad, bad engaging visitors. We're saying this is the average bounce rate of China, the way we see it. Uh, on the U.S. and the U.K., slightly lower than average bounce rate. And if you think about it, the web is mostly geared towards folks who speak English. So that's at least our hypothesis on why this bounce rate is lower than the average. Pretty interesting data. And, and this kind of gives us a sense. Now, again, this data is hugely aggregated. So it's going to be hard to say, like, yes, this is the absolute bust. But it is interesting to look at the comparisons across and, and just see where you stand and use it as a place to measure. So what else we got? Average time on site of the world. Um, again, on your left side, number of countries, histogram. On the bottom, average time on site. All the way at the bottom, it's a little far away, but we got about 2.2 minutes. Or, sorry, this is in seconds, so 220 seconds. The average is about 360 or five minutes. And all the way on the end, we've got uh, 760, which my math isn't very good. It's about nine minutes. No, 10, 11, 12, 12 minutes. Anyway. Here's the country breakdown. Again, you see some of the Asian countries like China not doing really well on engagement metrics. And it, it's hard to, to, again, say what this is. It could be uh, all sorts of things that are causing that engagement to be lower on the average time on site. When we look at USA, again, slightly above the average in terms of engagement, in terms of time on site. And then you go back to those island countries, and they're having a great time hanging on your website. Now this gets interesting, conversion rate. Now, I want to stress that this is goal conversion rate, and everyone knows that goals and analytics are user-defined. So you define a goal. It can be someone visiting any page in your site, like your About Me page. It can be a purchase of a $10,000 boat. It can be someone staying on your page for more than four minutes. But aggregate, total conversion rate, it can be really low. It can be really high. Again, we're looking at a number of countries. Uh, again, we see Asia just slightly below. USA here falters. Um, it, it's not really about the average. The average, if I had to guess, is somewhere around UK, maybe Russia, uh, is the average conversion rate. Uh, but again, a conversion is not purchase of a $10,000 boat. It is the defined conversion, as people, all analytics users are defining it. But it gives you a place to stand from. Now, there's one other kind of tidbit I want to share. And this is the idea of three screens. Now, this has been shared kind of broadly. And this is the idea that, hey, you've got a computer, you've got a phone, and then you've got a tablet. And I had to include the Zoom in there, if you're asking. People, people will buy them. Uh, the Zoom's nice. I have one, if you want to see it. Um, anyway, I don't think people understand sort of the magnitude of what's going on with tablets right now. Quarter over quarter, we saw a doubling in traffic from tablets. 
a doubling in traffic. Like, you expect a lot of people getting tablets, but doubling, and, and not, not insignificant numbers. I mean, they're not catching up the mobile yet, but it's kind of huge how, how crazy it's going. And tablets are just beginning. I mean, iPad 2 came out last week, uh, and now we have a swarm of Android tablets coming. The Playbook is coming in a couple weeks. Tablets are going to be a very different experience, and they expect it to be first-class citizens on your website. So it's a pl time to start thinking about how we want to handle working with tablets, because they have different capabilities. They have high-resolution screens. Some of them have flash. Some of them can do certain things. Um, and it, it's changing. And then this kind of blew my mind when I was looking for interesting tidbits. This idea of a force screen. Now, I was really surprised to find out that a lot of people use TV to browse the web. And I'm not just talking like a television monitor. I'm talking people browsing the web from their PlayStation, their Nintendo Wii, and, and now Google TV and other web-enabled TVs. Now, it's not huge and astronomical like tablets, but it's a surprisingly large number. When I actually looked at how people use Google Analytics itself, people are logging into Analytics and checking their reports from their TV. This seems silly to me, because if I want to browse the web, I have a phone, a tablet, and a PC. But it's out there. And so I encourage you to go you know, take a look and see where you fall. I mean, with any kind of trend, either your visitors, your website, your audience is in line with the trend, runs counter with the trend, or somewhere in between. So I encourage you to look at these trends, see where your audience, where your website fits in, and how that goes. And lastly, I have a plug. Thank you, of course. Um, GageCon, the Google and Caesar conference, is on Thursday and Friday, as people sitting in this room, you can get 40% off uh, to attend. It's Thursday uh, is one day, and then Friday is another training day. The registration desk out de outside can get you set up with that. So 40% off if you want to come on. There will be really cool Google Analytics stuff, including some really fancy swag. Uh, and for the folks who came by the Google booth earlier today, uh, we had no swag. There is now swag. So please, come get swagged. Thank you. Great, Robert. Thank you so much.